chairman person for our session dr riaz uh, my honorable co panelist dr shinaz dr atiya friends friends from the media ladies and gentlemen uh, very good afternoon um allow me to begin by thanking the hosts for asking me to speak here uh, and i would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate you on your 10th year commemorations but more than that i'd like to officially place on record my appreciation for the work of the human development forum um, they are a stellar example of pakistan's diaspora they bring a lot of value to the country not in ter- not only in terms that can be monetized but also in terms of the emotional involvement and the technical inputs and they bring a lot of value to improving the lives of the disadvantaged people in the poorest areas of the country without regard for much fanfare and without regard for much uh, recognition and i must congratulate the board of directors and the management of the human development foundation for the stellar work that they do in our country i have been tasked with the responsibility of uh, talking very briefly about the role of ca- social capital in sustainable development and i think i will take the cue from the chair's opening remarks and talk about sustainable development as it relates to the sustainability of humanity and nations and populations as you very rightly said in your opening address um my other remit is to talk about social capital uh, social capital is a, is essentially a concept which is quite inherent to community development and community organization and it it evolved from the mantra of social mobilization because social mobilization was initially seen as a very crucial step in community organization but it was subsequently found out that communities can actually be assets in their own right and therefore the collaborative working and the trust and the mutual cooperation between communities can be harnessed for the collective good of communities and this is actually a science and a very specific area of policy and development and implementation which my two worthy co-panelists know a lot more about than i do and i'm not going to be talking about the grassroots aspect of uh, so- social capital i'm going to be talking about social capital as it relates to um, the betterment of populations and as it relates to progress at a more national level and the basic premise of the broader understanding of social capital essentially stems from the understanding that we recognize capital in physical and monetary terms we know how to give it a value we know how to spin it into national development indicators but there are two softer aspects of um uh, of capital one of them is human capital and the other one is social capital there are some measures for human capital but the social capital dimension is extremely soft it's extremely intangible but it is critically relevant for the process of national development and human development indeed and i'd like to briefly touch upon six points to highlight the importance of social capital in the process of national development the first point that i'd like to make is basically to learn from history about the value of social capital and in order to do that i think we need to step back and look at the evolution of nation states uh, subsequent to um, the coming to uh, conclusion of the second world war you will very clearly see that there are two categories of nation states there are nation states which um, developed complex interdependencies with western industrialized democracies a flavor of which the chair, chairman gave to you in the previous session and those countries went on to the path of peace and prosperity there's another group of nations which were in the geostrategically troubled part, parts of the world and our unfortunate nation is part of those those over a period of time got increasingly debt ridden and could not uh, bring peace and harmony and prosperity and economic progress to the population <coughs> if you track five indicators in these countries growth and per capita income as an indicator of economic progress infant and maternal mortality and the level of education as a measure of social progress and the governance ranking as a proxy indicator of social capital at the broader level you will see a perfect correlation which goes to show that there are a deep interlinkage of economic progress with with human progress and with the effectiveness of governance 
And I think there is a lesson to be learned here from our, for our present administration of the state, which continues to slash social sector budgets. As of today, there's an official 40% cut, and what actually goes behind the scenes is something that we cannot fathom. The second uh, point that I'd like to uh, raise with, re with regard to social capital is basically a question. And the question relates to the fact that are we actually harnessing social capital for the process of national development? And here, social capital refers to working collaboratively. And if that is indeed the definition of social capital, then nowhere is its relevance more critically significant that in the broader policy, public policy arena, in the broader arena of strategic planning, and crit essentially and critically in the area of the various areas of reform that we need to make progress on very swiftly, whether they are in the macroeconomic sphere, whether they relate to the social sectors, whether they relate to reform in the broader ambit of governance and transparency in making the civil services effective, or whether it is in ensuring security, not just in the conventional sense, but also in the sense of food and energy and demographic security. And some of the discussions in the morning were centered around that in various different ways. Uh, and we see that as opposed to the need to harness the social capital at a broader strategic level to make governance effective for these broad goals, we see a lot of fragmentation. So we see that the decision makers are focused on short-term goals and short-term orientations, and government, governments detrack and retrack on policies every now and then. And the, the chair of the previous with us, but I couldn't agree more with him when he said that the actual threat to, uh, to the well-being of the country, to the well-being of the people, is not corruption itself, though it's extremely critically a negative factor, but it is the detracking and the retracking from, from policy decisions which actually makes sure that nothing ever comes to fruition. So we have one go government putting on an agenda for reform, another government coming and detracking from it. Institutions have absolutely no, um, uh, no accountability mechanisms to make people who detract accountable for what they do. And in the process, lots of public monies are lost, uh, are lost in the process. So this is a critical illustration of the manner in which social capital at the broader governance level is not being harnessed for the good of humanity, for the good of the people, for the good of national development, very much in line with the mantra that the chair in his opening remarks alluded to. The third point that I'd like to make uh, is actually a very intriguing point. It intrigues me as somebody interested uh, very deeply in public policy, as somebody who's very interested in understanding the dynamics of social capital and how they contribute to national development. Again, if social capital is about collaborative working, then we shouldn't take it for a given that collaborative uh, working at the higher echelons of power always work in the favor of national development and the progress of the people. And I'll give you an illustration to prove that point. We see, for instance, that decision-making at the higher level, in the rubric of decision-making at the higher level, we see that decision-makers have very effectively lobbied to make sure that the base of the track tax net, net, net is not broadened, that the agriculture sector remains outside of the tax net, that the stock market remains outside of the tax net. We see that our country has a very bad balance sheet, but as opposed to that, the establishment has a, is working extremely collaboratively to make sure that there are no cut down on expenditures. It's a classical example of social capital, but not moving in the interest of the broader uh, outcomes of the state and the people. 